Come with me up Moses Mountain, come and meet with God. Come with me to the river bank with the spinning wheels of love. Come with me up Moses Mountain, come and meet with God. Come Excellent. Welcome to Worship Clinic number three and Worship Dynamics part two. Um, today we're going to talk about a variety of things, but we're going to focus on worship sets and building a worship set, different um, venues for worship, different types of worship gatherings, and the kind of sets that you need, that we need for that. Um, one of the biggest questions about creating a worship set is to plan or not to plan. And there are equal arguments for both and everything in between. Um, the things that we need to consider when we're structuring a set are things like the needs of the people, um, what we believe that God wants to do in a worship setting, um, the in-the-moment flow of the Holy Spirit, the time allotment we've been given, um, the size, the purpose of the meeting. These are all different things that contribute to the kind of set you're, you're going to do. Um, if you have a conference worship, you're going to have different dynamics than a Sunday worship set, and you're going to have different dynamics than a soaking evening or a small group setting. Um, you can plan a set, and in doing so, plan the Holy Spirit right out of it. On the same side, you can plan to make room for the Holy Spirit within the plan. So you can have a structure that's fluid enough that allows for Holy Spirit to come in and do what he wants to do. Um, or you can have no plan and just let it rip and see what happens. There are right and less right situations for different types of sets. I, I won't say wrong, but you'll find in using, you know, trying out different things as leaders, as teams, you'll find out what works and what doesn't. Um, some examples of things that we work with, um, typically on a Sunday morning, you can call it situation number one, you're, you're given an allotment of time to get in, to go deep and get out. You may have half an hour, you may have 45 minutes, you may have an hour, but you have an allotted time and purpose within that allotted time to bring the people in, hopefully to go somewhere deep, somewhere intimate, and then bring them back out again so that they can process the next step of what's going to happen. If you have a speaker, or, you know, what, whatever's happening, you don't want to leave them there. Um, situation number two, you can have less of a time constraint, but, but if it doesn't happen, okay, if, if that thing doesn't land, if we don't go to the place, it's not happening. You see what I'm saying? Like, we can have a longer thing, but there's still a beginning and an end. And you can begin to flow, but you know that there, there has to come a point where there's a logical end. Um, the situation three is we have no time constraint at all. You just go for it. And people come and go. They leave when they have to leave. But we're there for the long haul with no agenda. That, a lot of times, is the worshiper's dream, right? We think about that and think, man, if we didn't have to function within... But, you know... Ultimately, and I, I know I say this over and over again, but ultimately we're there to serve God and to serve the people. And so in our situations, most of the time, we're not looking at places where we have no time constraint. Um, soaking is brilliant because you really don't have a time constraint. You can have a fixed beginning and an end point, but you can go as deep as you want, and people have the choice to engage. And you're there to facilitate, but it's not the same, as you know, a Sunday morning worship where we're, we're there with a specific task in a specific time allotment. Um, this, this has within it, the, the typical Sunday service, even a conference service, has within it an agenda. And I, I think we need to get away from thinking that an agenda or a schedule is a negative, because it really is not. As, as worshipers, we are there to serve God and the interests of the people and the vision and interests of our leadership. That's why we're there. We work within the framework we're given. Our ability to do that speaks to our character and speaks really to, to the room God has to flow through us as worshipers. If we come with an attitude like, man, I'm stuck with 45 minutes to do my thing, you know, I, I'd be willing to bet that God would be less willing to inhabit that than he would the heart of a servant that says, great, this is the time we have. We're going to give it all we have to bring the people in in this period of time. Um, I learned this little quote when I was learning from Steve Swanson, and I would like to write it on my fridge and my window and my forehead. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be bent out of shape. 
we, this needs to be our mantra. <laughs> Can we say mantra in the Christian circles? This needs to be what we carry close to our heart. Blessed are the